Hi there. In this session, we're going to be looking at multiplication of fractions. We're going to start with um, a fraction of an amount. Now, what I'd like you to do is please copy this down in your books as we go through it exactly as you hear it in the video. So you've got a really good set of notes explaining the different types of multiplication of fractions we're going to come across. So the first one we're going to look at, fraction of amount. First question is we have one fifth of 20. Now we can replace that of with a multiplication sign. We can write that therefore as one fifth multiplied by 20. But when we write the 20, we're going to write it as 20 over one. That's because we don't want to accidentally multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 20. Then we'd just be left with an equivalent fraction. Okay, so let's have a look. If we multiply the numerators together, one lot of 20 gives us 20. We multiply our denominators together, five multiplied by one gives us five. I can simplify that five goes into 20 four times. So therefore, my answer is four. Let's look at that a different way. If we go back to this here, I could write that as one multiplied by 20 over five multiplied by one. We know that one lot of 20 is simply 20 and five lots of one is five. Again, that's going to give us an answer of four. Let's look at what we've got here. We've got 20 divided by five. We can write that as 20 divided by five. Okay, so it's always important to understand the maths behind what we're actually doing, not just automatically say, oh, we multiply the numerators and we multiply the denominators. Maybe we can also see what that looks like if I draw a rectangle that represents um, 20 squares. So I've drawn, it doesn't matter what size, I've happened to draw mine five squares by four squares, which gives me 20. And I want one fifth of these 20 squares, one fifth of them. So I need to divide this into fifths. So let's see what happens if I do that. Divide it into fifths. One fifth of 20. So one of my fifths, I can shade like that. One, two, three, four. I have shaded four squares, four squares. So I know I've got the right answer. Let's just make it a little bit harder. This time, let's instead of one fifth, let's have three fifths of 20. Again, I'm going to write that as three divided by five multiplied by 20 over one. I can multiply my numerators together to give me 60 my denominators together to give me five, and that gives me 12. Okay, it's worth just introducing a concept here called cross-cancelling. Some of you might like this, some people don't. You do not have to use cross-cancelling. It makes the math simpler, but if it's a little bit confusing, then you just do exactly what we've done here, multiplying the numerators and the denominators together. So let's have a look. We have three fifths multiplied by 20 over one. We look at the diagonals here and we have a look and see if five is a factor of 20 or if one is a factor of three or vice versa. In this case, we can see that Five is a factor of 20 because five multiplied by four gives us 20. So I can divide by five. Five divided by five gives me one. 20 divided by five gives me four. And now I do the same again. I multiply out my numerators. Three multiplied by four is 12. One multiplied by one is one. Got the same answer of 12. 
Okay, up to you if you want to look at using that option. Okay, let's move on. So I want to look at multiplication of a fraction by a fraction. So we've got a new heading there. And for those of you that I teach, you know how fastidious I am. Underlining using a ruler, margins, etc. Okay, so question three. We have five sevenths. We're multiplying it by seven over ten. Okay. Very similar to before, except we're not multiplying by a whole number. We're now multiplying by another fraction. We can multiply our numerators together. 5 multiplied by 7 gives me 35. 7 multiplied by 10 gives me 70. Now, some of you might see straight away what that can be simplified down to. But if you're not clear, we could maybe say that they're both in the 5 times table. So we can divide them both by 5. That's going to give me 7 as my numerator and 14 as my denominator. And now we might see that they're both in the 7 times table. And therefore I can divide the numerator and the denominator by 7. 7 divided by 7 gives me 1. 14 divided by 7 gives me 2. We've simplified down to one half. Now you might have seen here that 35 is a factor of 70, in which case you can um, divide by 35 and fast forward straight to one half is the answer. All right, you still see that okay? Um, back to that cross cancelling again, again entirely optional, but it's is quite a nice example of where it makes it easy. Because if I can see I've got a seven here and a seven here, if I divide by seven, that just takes me down to one. I've got a five here and a 10 here. Divide five by five to get one. Divide 10 by five to get two. And I've got one over two. All right, nice simple way to get straight to that answer of one half. Finally, let's look at mixed number multiplication. If there's going to be an error, this is the most likely place where people may make a mistake. And I'll explain why in a moment. So we've got mixed number multiplication. So we're looking at question four. We have one and three quarters and we are multiplying it by two and a half. The key here, and we're going to write it down in a little bubble so that you've got it as a key learning point. Always convert mixed numbers into improper fractions. before multiplying. Really important that we remember that. Always convert mixed numbers into improper fractions before multiplying. Okay, we've done improper fractions to mixed number conversion before. So one multiplied by four is four, add three gives me seven over four. Two multiplied by two is four, add one is five. Okay, and now I'm back to this simple case of just multiplying the numerators and the denominators together. So I've got 7 multiplied by 5 gives me 35. 4 multiplied by 2 gives me 8. I now want to see how many times 8 goes into 35. It is 4, remainder 3. So my answer is 4 and 3 eighths. The most common mistake that people will make is they will multiply the whole numbers together, one 
multiplied by 2 is 2. And then they'll multiply the fraction element together. 3 quarters multiplied by 1 half is going to give me 3 eighths. Um, and then they'll add them together and get an answer of 2 and 3 eighths, which you can see is um, approximately half of the correct answer, which is 4 and 3 eighths. So it's a really good idea when you're doing things like um, mixed number multiplication, just to approximate what you think the answer is going to be. And if we say that one and three quarters is nearly two, and two and a half, well, that's just a bit bigger than two, then I'm going to expect my answer to be approximately two multiplied by two. It's going to be about four. It might be a bit more, it might be a bit less, but it's going to be about four. And indeed it is four and three eighths. Thank you very much.